Chapter Twenty Four of Grace Harlowe Overseas by Jesse Graham Flower. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Ashley Jane. Chapter Twenty Four Grace Harlowe's Surprise. When nine o'clock came and no Grace Harlowe, Cora Totten's alarm was very great. Her call by telephone to the Bureau of Information was productive of no information whatever as to what had become of Grace. Of course Miss Totten surmised what had occurred, but there was nothing that she could do beyond telling the girls of the unit about what had happened, which she did at once, and they, of course, were alarmed for Grace's safety. Arline was designated to see their chief in the morning and get him to use his good offices toward assisting Grace out of her predicament. While the girls were still discussing the situation, Cora was summoned to the telephone. She uttered a little cry that centred the attention of her companions on her on the instant. "'Lieutenant Pierce, you are a gift straight from the gods,' she cried. Come over to the Overton unit immediately, for we're in great trouble. Hurry! Girls, girls, isn't it wonderful? Lieutenant Pierce is here on leave, and he is coming to help us. Oh, I'm so happy. The lieutenant was with them very shortly thereafter, and Miss Totten related the story as she knew it to him, to which he listened gravely, now and then interrupting with a question. We can do nothing tonight he declared after Cora had finished. In the morning I will try to see the American ambassador. Does her husband know? Of course not. He is at the front, spoke up Emma. It was late when the lieutenant left. On the following morning he succeeded in obtaining an interview with the ambassador, who promised to investigate at once. The latter did so by sending his military aide to the bureau, where the aide personally examined all the papers in the case, to which he was given free access by the French officers. But the day passed with no word either of a favourable or unfavourable nature. In the meantime, Mr. Davis, thoroughly aroused, had started an investigation of his own, and the Department of the Sign, perhaps never had brought upon itself such a storm of protest from various quarters as it had stirred up by detaining Grace Harlow Gray. The day passed and the night came with still no word, and Lieutenant Pierce again called at the embassy, where he held a brief interview with the aide. What the aide said to him, the anxious girls of the Overton unit did not know but when he called on them early next morning they observed that his face wore a worried look. Lieutenant Pierce did know in a general way that the Department of the Sign were investigating, that the plot they were unfolding was deeper and more far-reaching than even Grace had dreamed could be possible. When Saturday night came and still no word from the Bureau, genuine alarm began to manifest itself among the girls of the Overton unit and that night, red-eyed and miserable, they slept not at all. It was early Sunday morning when Lieutenant Pierce received a summons to call at the bureau. "'You have news for me?' he asked eagerly, as the French captain shook hands with him cordially. "'More than that, Lieutenant. We have the great honour of turning over to you the person of a most estimable young woman. Enter, madame.' he added, throwing open a door, and Grace walked into the room. Oh! she exclaimed. Is it possible? Lieutenant Pierce! I thank you, Captain. I am certain that the Lieutenant can do much to assist you in clearing up this affair, and I know you will trust an American officer and gentleman, even though you doubt me. Madame Gray, Lieutenant Pierce already has done much for us and for you in this matter, and far from distrusting you, our confidence in you is of the highest, for you have rendered to France a very great service. We were convinced after going over the proofs that you submitted to us that you were guiltless and that you had done what the Secret Service had failed to accomplish. It became necessary, however, for reasons which I am not at liberty to explain, to detain you as our honoured guest. The captain bowed low. That reason no longer exists. Thank you, captain, answered Grace smilingly. Our great regret it is, continued the French officer, that we have done you so unforgivable a wrong. Such amends as can be made will be made. 
to your ambassador and to our friend the lieutenant much credit is due the same may be said of the head of your own organization the captain paused and smiled at one time he came near assaulting me because i cast as he thought doubt upon your uprightness believe me madame gray i am deeply grieved that he should have so construed any remark of mine i fully understand captain i i wonder if i might ask a question the countess what of her pardon me madame i cannot speak of that i will say that the countess has been under suspicion for some time you will understand that i i think i do understand sir interrupted grace smilingly and stepping forward she shook hands cordially with the french officer i am grateful to you captain and i assume that hereafter i shall leave old world diplomacy thoroughly alone good-bye monsieur le captain and viva la france grace with an arm linked with that of the lieutenant walked from the room free my thanks to you are too great for words lieutenant where is miss totten she asked at your lodgings i will take you there grace said she must go to headquarters and report to mr davis first and would join the lieutenant at the lodgings in a very short time upon reaching the overton unit's lodgings lieutenant pierce was treated to a surprise several of the girls of the unit and a caller were there mrs gray is free cried the lieutenant as a group of anxious faces peered down over the stair railing she will be here shortly it was then that he discovered the caller to whom he received an introduction a few seconds later what a surprise this is he said shaking hands cordially with sergeant tom gray i think i know of a noble little woman who will be even more surprised how do you come here at this psychological moment questioned the lieutenant smilingly i am on leave lieutenant and i thought to surprise my wife instead she has furnished me with a genuine surprise lieutenant i am unable to express what i feel for your kindness in this unfortunate affair however it is war and we must accept conditions as we find them how soon do you look for mrs gray to arrive here she should be here within the hour i hear a cab stopping now cora look out lieutenant pierce was all excitement it's grace cried miss totten starting for the door the lieutenant barred her way i think we may all with propriety leave mrs gray and her husband alone for their greeting he said you will excuse us sergeant tom gray nodded and smiled he was lean and strong and his face was browned and a little more lined than before he went to war but there was a certain something about him that the old tom gray did not show on the surface at least hello girls here i am again cried grace bursting into the room she halted abruptly a puzzled look on her face i beg your don't you know me grace tom oh tom grace's eyes shone through her tears when finally she held her husband off at arm's length and surveyed him critically lovingly how how wonderful you are but in your eyes except when they are looking at me i see the same hard look that i have observed in all the men who have seen service at the front i want you to look like that when you were looking toward the enemy but i do not wish to see it there when you are with me now talk to me then we must call the girls in where are they lieutenant pierce dragged them all out when he heard you coming he thought we would wish to be alone smiled tom he is a dear i do hope he and cora make a match here they come now and i haven't said the least little part of what i wanted to say the greetings were heartfelt as tom gray knew and his heart went out to these loyal overton girls as it never had before lieutenant pierce and cora came out after the greetings were over grace looked at her freckled-faced friend suspiciously cora if i am a judge of human nature i should say that you two have something to say to us the moment for full and free confession is at hand reminded grace oh mrs gray murmured cora blushing furiously my friends miss totten has consented to be my wife and i think i may call you that spoke up the lieutenant we are to be married at the close of the war provided we both come through it it was and is my desire to have the wedding now but cora will not listen to that 
declaring that after our duty to our country is done will be time enough to do our duty by ourselves and when that day arrives interjected the freckled-faced girl i do not mind saying that i shall marry the best man in the world one of the best corrected grace slipping a confiding hand into the big brown hard fist of sergeant tom gray it was a happy party that sat down to dinner in the overton quarters that day there was music and song chatter and laughter all the rest of the afternoon and until a late hour in the evening then still later as tom and grace stood hand in hand at the window of their darkened room beams of light began sweeping the skies followed a few moments later by the crashes of artillery while the detonations of exploding bombs rattled their windows and set the building a tremble it is war murmured grace but love is greater than all for war will one day stop while love goes on forever sergeant tom gray's brief leave expired on the following day when he started for the front and grace her heart filled with happiness after those few hours of perfect companionship took up her work with new strength and purpose a work that amid the confusion and crash of war called for endurance and courage of high order the countess de beaupre as grace learned some time later had been sent to prison for the duration of the war but she was unable to learn what had become of the spy andre though she heard it said that he having taken alarm had successfully made his escape as for the peasant woman while not knowing what had been her fate grace observed upon driving that way some time later that the cottage was deserted from which fact she drew her own conclusions though the countess de beaupre had made a dramatic exit from the overton girl's life and activities her passing was not a final one grace was to meet her again when the battle of wits between the two women would be renewed one revengeful and dangerous the other thinking only of her country and its welfare ready to do and to dare all for its cause the further exploits of grace harlowe and the story of her labours in the cause of humanity and her country will be found in a following volume entitled grace harlowe with the red cross in france end of chapter twenty four recording by ashley jane end of grace harlowe overseas by Jessie Graham Flower